Hello, I'm Paul Cooper, Corporate Reporting Manager at ACCA. I'm here with Richard Martin, Head of Corporate Reporting at ACCA, to discuss the new accounting directive which emanates from the EU. So Richard, we've discussed the IFRS for SMEs, yep. but there are changes which will affect all companies in Europe, not just those adopting the IFRS for SMEs. Yes. Can you outline what's going on here, please? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2013, um, so a few months ago, the European Union uh, finalised its accounting accounting directive, and what that means is that then in every in every one of the uh, of the member states, the company legislation for uh, for for accounting will have to be will, will have to be uh, changed. Um, now, uh, so that, that's change. Uh, when change happens, um, sometimes uh, governments decide to uh, decide to add, add 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 various things in. But the the important thing is that there are quite a lot of member state options, in other words, choices that those 28 uh, governments have to make about how to implement uh, the, the the accounting directive uh, in 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 their, in their particular country. Um, <clears throat> Incidentally, as we were talking about the IFRS for SMEs, uh, a few of the changes do actually help with the adoption of IFRS for SMEs if countries wanted to do that. The changes are helpful on the whole. Great. Which size of a company is most likely to be affected by the directive? Yeah, uh, it's going to be, t I'd pick out uh, two in particular, Paul. Uh, I would say the, uh, firstly, there are the um, oil and gas, mining and forestry companies. And they will have to do a completely new and separate report uh, that they've not done before, and that is about payments that they make to governments around the world. It's called the country by country reporting, uh, and it is literally literally that. So it's how much they're paying to the government in a, in, in a particular country, and that means uh, taxation, it means the royalties they're paying for access to the mineral or, uh, or forestry rights, uh, uh, and indeed uh, other sorts of payments that might be even less transparent um, that, uh, than those. Um, but there are, of course, very few of those companies, so relatively few will be affected and they tend to be large. The other group are small companies, and clearly here we're dealing with a very large number of uh, companies. In fact, the huge majority of companies in Europe are small, and they are significantly affected by these, uh, by, 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 by these changes. Firstly, in terms of just thresholds. So uh, there is a new category of company called the micro, uh, micro company, which will be created. That's for companies uh, who have a turnover of, uh, of less than 700,000 euros a year, for example, and less than 10 employees. Um, uh, and so that's a new category. That will, again, I suspect be the majority of companies in Europe will qualify uh, as, as micro companies. Um, but the small category, including micros, is also extended um, because the limits, the thresholds there have been raised to up to 12 million euros of turnover uh, and 50, 50 employees, for example. So uh, that will be, there will be, these are the groups of companies most affected. There will be more companies in those, in, in those categories. Right. As micro entities seem to be the largest, large, largest category, can you just run through what the accounts will look like for micro entities should they take maximum advantage of the exemptions in the directive? Yeah, um, the uh, micro companies, for micro companies, I think the theme is, dis is reductions in requirements. Uh, so if we were to look um, uh, at what a balance sheet might look like for a micro company in the future, which will be, um, which will be uh, on, uh, which is on the slide here. Uh, what we're looking at there is perhaps just a handful, literally, of items on the balance sheet, um, and with very with no further analysis. So, just current assets, we won't be able to tell, for example, how much is stock, uh, how much of those current assets are are, are, are cash. Uh, same with the P&L, a much shorter profit and loss account. Again, being illustrated on the on on the on the slide that uh, that, that that you can see. So much briefer there. 
notes to the accounts, virtually non-existent. There will just be uh, literally a few, which are uh, literally one or two, which are about principally about contingencies uh, and commitments, uh, and that's it. There are then some restrictions and changes on the accounting, so uh, no revaluations uh, allowed, and member states may opt to include this rather uh, strange category of reduced uh, accruals for certain, uh, for certain overhead expenses. So there's going to be big changes then for micro entities. Yeah. Will there be similarly large changes for small non micro entities, again, if they take advantage of the exemptions available? I exactly. So we're talking about in the plus 700,000 um, uh, of income up to the 10 million, uh, uh, up to the 12 million, sorry, uh, uh, category. Uh, here again, the story overall is about reductions in, in requirements, but less change here because. The existing formats uh, will continue to be uh, required and there will be considerable um, and the, uh, the accounting uh, sort of uh, uh, the accounting treatments that are required by the directive will be there as well. Uh, there will be, however, disclosure reductions in terms of the notes to the accounts. And we can see on the slide here the notes that are going to be required. And what's important to understand about this list is that that is all that can be required. So we're talking about maximum harmonisation here. This is laid down by the European Union. Uh, member states cannot add to uh, add to what they've uh, what was what's what's on this list, except. <laughs> but there is a further list of ones that member states can choose to add. And these are five, again, being shown on your, on your screen now. And what, is, uh, what I think is very significant to note here is that these five include some very important disclosure requirements. And I'd highlight just, for example, related party transactions and post-balance sheet events. Now, I think it's reasonable to ask whether... Uh, whether you can have a, a set of accounts that gives a true and fair view without having related party uh, disclosures or indeed the, uh, the, 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 the post-balance sheet uh, events. So what has ACCA's view generally been on the, pro on the proposed changes in the directive? Yeah, I think um, the... Uh, well, we see these, disclosure, these reductions in requirements for uh, the small and micro, uh, micro companies. Uh, those might seem to be quite uh, helpful, but I think that actually there are, they do raise issues. I don't believe being asked to disclose these sorts of items that come directly out of people's accounting systems and, uh, uh, and software is very onerous, so that I don't believe the reductions in what you've got to show really represent any significant reduction in cost. And I think you also have to bear in mind that, um, that some of these items will be required by the tax authorities anyway. So it's a matter of not having, you'll still have to prepare some of these items even though you may not be disclosing them on the public record. And it's the public record that is really the big change here. What we can see is it's not clear that there are big uh, cost advantages to the to the enterprises. What is very clear is that there will be reductions in the financial information that is available to users of accounts, creditors, uh, other trading, uh, other, other trade of trading partners, and so on. And um, that I don't know whether we're not so sure. That's a very good thing. Um, and I've highlighted also the significant member state options that we believe member states actually should exercise and re retain those items and will be of course pressing for member states to do that. Great, thank you Richard. And it does seem that there's plenty to watch out for if you're a preparing company in an EU member state. Thank you also for watching this podcast which I hope you found very useful.